thank you so much for being here. Um, we were excited to see that um, we have not only filled the ballot, but there are enough people running. We have a couple of races. So it's just nice to make sure everybody knows each other and um, gives you a chance to answer some questions and um, introduce yourselves. So uh, appreciate that. I'm just gonna read through um, who is on the ballot for what. And it took me a while. I had to really go through this a few times with our um, clerk and you know, ask some questions with the, uh, the county and the city to try to figure out who's running for what. But I think we've got it figured out now, so I'm just gonna go through that. Um, running unopposed, we have Leon Begu for the first ward. Um, that's a partial term, two years. Uh, Sally Cole for an at-large seat, that's a partial two term, two years. Tom Donald for a second ward, um, a full four-year term. And Bruce Krieger for an at-large seat, a partial two-year term. Facing opposition, we have Connie Dunsell and Ed Hahn for an at-large seat for a full four-year term. Nick Silman and Sue Pettiprin for the first ward seat for a full four-year term. Um, we have Bruce and Sue. Uh, Sorry that they couldn't be here today. And then we had Nick for a minute, but he got called up to an emergency. Um, he's a firefighter, so he was here and then had to go off and he hopes he'll be back, but who knows. Um, so let's just start by hearing from our candidates who are unopposed. And we're just gonna give them a couple of minutes to introduce themselves. Um, first, Sally Cole, would you like to <laughs> And when I was in high school, so I've lived here a long time. Uh, mostly in Ludington. I was employed in the Scapa area down around 1980. And then I, we operated a business in Ludington for 28 years and moved here to Scottville, moved our business here in our home in 2014. When we moved here, um, we were very interested, my husband Jerry and I, in learning more about the city. Small town, the invitation was just there. And so we started going to some of the commission meetings out of interest and it went from there just more and more interested in seeing the city develop continue to learn about how a small city is run so that's kind of the basis of our being here and the basis of how i got on the commission to begin with and i'm honored to serve and i'll continue to do my best i'm tom donald i live over across from the uh, mushroom factory um, i was born in howell michigan other side of lansing um, Moved up here in 73 as a kid, uh, raised over in free soil, uh, joined the Marine Corps, was in the Marine Corps for 10 years and pretty much went around the world. Um, married my wife back in uh, 83, I believe, getting this right, and she said we've been married 33 years. It seems like it's been 31 for a few years now, I'm not sure. We got two kids, uh, one's a firefighter for Scottville, and I guess he kind of goes out with all of them, uh, works in Oaks. And we have a daughter who's married a doctor and just moved out to Nevada again. Um, lived in town here now for uh, how long? 13 years. Grew up around the area, like I said, been in and out of town. Not a city dweller, I'd rather be in the country. Um, I guess the obvious question anybody would be asked is why are you here, why are you doing this? I know more about what's going on in Washington, D.C. than I do in Scottville. I don't have a clue about local politics or the city office or anything else, but I walk around, I see empty store buildings, I just seems like things are headed in the wrong direction to me, and I thought one way to get to know it is to jump right in. So with a little encouragement, here I am. I'd rather be hunting, but here I am. <laughs> I'm Connie Dunsell. Um, I've lived in Scottville all my life, um, which is a long time. <laughs> I have four grown children, four military children. One's a 22-year Marine. Um, one's uh, a four-year Navy. One's a 12-year Army that works for the CIA now. And then I have a daughter that is a 12-year Air Force, and she works as a civil servant for the Air Force now. So they're all, all military. I have seven grandchildren. Four of them go to Scottville, are associated with Scottville School. I have one that's a sophomore in Scottville right now. Um, I have five great-grandchildren. Hopefully I'll have them going to Scottville School soon. But I am interested in Scottville. I want to see it grow. I want to see it maintained. 
I'd like to see a lot of younger couples come back. My kids have been all over the world, seen a lot, and said, we're going back home. And that means a lot to me that if they can go out into the world and see what they've seen and then say, this is where we want to be, that encourages me to make sure that this town stays um, close-knit, hopefully get families back here, get the schools back running back up normally. I just want to see Scottville thr thrive again like it has been. And that's what I'm here for. Thanks. My name is Ed Hahn. I've lived in Scottville for nine years. Uh, the reason why I'm running for Commissioner of Large is because I, I see that, like Connie said, there's a lot of empty stores, uh, there's a lot of problems with the businesses, we, we, we're going in the wrong direction. And I, I feel it's time that uh, we as residents of the community start stepping up and doing what's necessary to turn this around. Uh, some of my policies would be complete and open disclosure. No backroom deals, no coming in and talking to uh, the city manager. I want everything that I do right out in public at commissioner's meetings. Uh, I don't know what more to say other than the fact that I'm here to serve the people. If anybody has a question, they can feel free to ask. I'll be direct, honest, and straightforward about anything. Thank you. Let's talk about the city and what makes Scottville um, a special place for you. What do you love most about Scottville and why? Oh, the reason I enjoy Scottville so much is I can get involved. I can walk down the street. Um, I can go into any store. I know everybody by their first names. Um, most everybody knows me. It's a small knit community. Um, you don't have to worry about um, police or crime of any kind. Um, I mean, my door is open all the time. So I just feel it's a great community. I moved here nine years ago. Uh, I enjoy being in the area. I do a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing. I started in 85 uh, fishing out of the Lightington Harbor. So when I moved back to New York after a job transfer and I retired, I looked in the area to see where I wanted to live because this was the area I did want to live in. Uh, I found a lot that I wanted to build my house on. I've enjoyed living here. I have developed a lot of good friends. Unfortunately, some of them have passed. My neighbors, the Goffs, uh, Betty Blundell, but there's still, I, I know a lot of wonderful people here, and at this point, what I'd like to do is try and help the ones that are still here. Um, thank you. The next question, again, for both of you, um, what makes you or would make you a good commissioner? Okay, uh, what would make me a good commissioner is, I have a pretty good business head. Uh, I have, I'm very good with math, as some of you will argue or, or agree to. Uh, like I said earlier, I believe in transparency. I don't believe that anything should go without public knowledge. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just rabid on that. Uh, there's, there's too many things that I've seen that went unaccounted for. And one of the things that I would really try to do is encourage the residents of the uh, community to start attending the commissioners meetings and voicing their concerns, voicing their opinions, and uh, trying to help address some of the issues. Thank you. Um, I've been a commissioner already for four years. It's been a very good learning experience. Um, I've met some very wonderful people that are on the commission. Um, as far as being a commissioner, that's why I'm running again, is I enjoy the job. I think it's a very fun-filled, rewarding job. And I just feel the city is 
me. I mean, I, I need to be involved. Thank you. The Michigan Municipal League offers training for commissioners. Have either of you attended that training, or would you, and why or why not? Uh, to answer your question, yes, I did try to get in. I was scheduled for the class, and the Michigan Municipal uh, canceled at the class at the last moment. So, unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity. Well, we try again. Yes. I've been invited to, but my work schedule um, has comprehended with the schedule with the meetings, so I have not been to one yet. Um, and this is specific to Ed Hahn. Um, you left the commission uh, midterm previously. Yes. Well, and what would you say to voters about fulfilling the term this time around? What I would say this time is there's a host of new commissioners running. And uh, there's an opportunity to develop a commission that's truly going to address the wants and the needs of the residents and address some of the issues that the city's facing right now. Is there anything you'd like to say, Connie, or you don't have to answer? No, okay, do okay. Let's talk about finances. Connie, what do you think about the city's finances and point to what you think about how the city is doing currently and why? Um, my opinion of the finances is, um, We've had auditors come in, do the books. They praise the audits that Amy has done. I am very pleased with everything. Um, financially, we, we work with Amy on everything that goes out, and I have no problems with anything that so financially. So you feel informed? And very informed, very and the auditors are very, very um, informative with everything. So I have no problems. And I work, I've been at Walgreens for 24 years now, and I do um, work with money all the time, you know, every day. And at the end of the night, we have to balance <coughs> our um, drawers and stuff. So it's just, I know financing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, all I would like to say is at this point, uh, I feel that there are issues that need to be addressed because we are near the maximum level of taxes that the residents can be billed. Uh, our enterprise uh, bills are extremely high and we need to start finding ways to become fiscally more responsible and start addressing some issues. Uh, with, with the money that the city's taking in, and, instead of becoming more solvent, we seem to be going further and further in debt instead of become, uh, going in the right direction, we're heading in the wrong direction. Since uh, I was commissioner, we went from being in debt from about $2 million, now we're gonna be in debt to approximately $4 million and the only way that I can see that that situation is going to get turned around is either we, we start looking at ways of cutting our cost or even raising uh, more rates on the residents. And I don't agree with the latter. I just wanted to make one more follow-up for you. Just when you were on the commission before, I remember you talking about wanting a treasurer as a separate position, and the city's been able to do that. Um, do you think that's helpful? No. I think... What should actually happen is the fact that, yes, we do have a separate treasurer, but I truly believe that what needs to be done is that the city charter needs to be amended so that the treasurer works directly for the commission and not for the city manager, so that there's a separation of power. And when a commission asks a question, it's directed directly to the treasurer, and the treasurer has no, no other responsibility other than to respond to the commission. Connie, do you want to address that issue? Um, I don't really know how to address that because we compromised and brought a, um, a person in to 
be treasure. She's working with Amy, um, learning the books, getting everything situated. So, and so far it's working. So I don't have any comment. On the issue of clerk and treasurer, that would be an amendment to the charter, I believe. Um, it's certainly been an issue in the city of Ludington where they've talked about, they have the opposite situation um, and have talked about whether to put that on the ballot and, and what people would want to do with that. Would you have an opinion on whether the clerk or treasurer should be um, appointed or elected? Um, right now, the treasurer is, was hired in um, and we have no problem with it. Um, she's working out great. Um, so right now we have no problems. Uh, again, I, I feel like that entire situation needs to be addressed and that uh, there needs to be a complete separation of power so that the treasurer is completely separate from the city manager. The treasurer right now works for the city manager, so that treasurer is still being controlled by the city manager. Uh, again, like I said, I feel that the uh, this charter should be amended so that the treasurer works directly for the commission and answers only to the commission so that the, the charter or the, the commission can be more thoroughly uh, informed and be able to make more conscious of, uh, decisions, if you will. What do you think the city's role is in helping local businesses and how do you think the city's doing and what more could the city do? Well, one of the things I think that the city should do, uh, and this would be something I would address if I'm elected, is the fact that I feel the city's not really doing much to help the businesses. Uh, they're collecting taxes, they're collecting water bills, but I feel like one of the first things we should do is amend the city charter again so that the business owners would have a right to vote on city issues. Right now they have no say whatsoever. All they, the only rights they have at this point is to come in, open their doors, uh, try and make as much money as they can, and at the same time, again, the only, the only input that they have with the city is to pay taxes and pay water bills. So I'd like to see that changed. Um, I disagree. We work with the, all of the city's um, businesses. We've had um, new fronts put on the stores. We have a, a committee that works with um, all of the store front owners. Um, we're trying to make the stores look good. We're trying to make more businesses, um, people come into the businesses. I don't know what more we can do other than what we're doing right now. Thank you. Okay, so my follow-up question is, I asked you what could the city do? What could you personally do to participate with the DDA and help the DDA help our local businesses that are here now and retain them and attract new ones? Again, the first thing I would like to do is amend the city charter so that the uh, resident or the business owners, and, and I need to clarify, that would be to exclude landlords. I'm talking about retail businesses only. Give them the right to vote, give them the right to come in and make suggestions. Uh, put them in a position where they can help make the city accountable. And at the same time, uh, that would allow us to get more insight as a commission, as city manager, treasurer, anybody that's involved uh, in the front office to uh, help create more business. We, we desperately need to make some changes here because we have, most of our business is run by three business owners in this city, and that's it, and that needs to change. Well, we have more business owners than three, but um, we've been helping personally. I do the spring cleanups. I do the neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor program. Um, I've 
worked with the Harvest Festival Committee. I've worked with the DDA Committee. Um, I've done the Blight Committee. We've, we're out there getting people involved. We're trying to find organizations that will help these people fix their homes up. Um, we're giving um, people advice about different programs that they can go to to get their houses fixed up. That's one of our big things right now. If we can get people in here to fix up their homes, they're going to bring businesses to Scottville. Okay, this is a question for both of you. Some questions. Some have talked about the ability to get along with one another and with city officials. Is that something that's important to you? How would you work toward that end if you find it of value? When you say work together, is that amongst commissioners or amongst and, and with city uh, officials or? and with city staff? Well, <laughs> the city staff's rather small to begin with, but yes, uh, typically when I was commissioner before, uh, I never had a problem. If I went in and had a question, uh, I would ask. I was never rude about it, and I always got a good response. Uh, as far as working with other commissioners, yes, uh, I'm always willing to work with the other commissioners. Uh, the biggest problem I see as commissioners go is there's such a variation on viewpoints as to whether we actually have a problem in the city financially, and if so, how to address it. I, I've never seen it. I've never seen a group of commissioners actually uh, resolve that situation yet. I have no problems with anybody on the commission. Um, we're like family. We all work together. Um, we have um, more like a social gathering when you go in to pay your bill, you know, it's like, hi, hi, hi. But um, I have no problems with anybody on the commission. And city officials? And city officials. Connie, what do you think about the ongoing water line construction project? <laughs> it's down my street! <laughs> it's taking longer than anticipated. Um, and how do you think that that's been handled? Well, right off the bat, I can say it's been a problem because of the actual problems with the workers and the but now that they've got the problems worked out i mean they were on my street they started monday they're done today i mean i have had no problems other than trying to get into my driveway um but as far as work wise they're really doing a good job and i think um once they've got over the problems that they hit on main street that took them so long they've learned and I think they're, they're going to have it done in the next couple of days. Um, I wanted to just go back for a minute. We talked a little bit about the charter, and Ed, that sounds like it's something that's very important to you to get some changes to the charter. And um, first, maybe you could address, would you work toward that end trying to change the charter? And then if you don't, I mean, you, you can't do that alone. So if you didn't get the number of people needed to make those changes, would you be willing to live with the way it is now? Uh, yeah, I would be uh, willing to work towards changing the charter in, in a number of areas. If I can't get them changed, uh, would I be willing to live with them? Do I have a choice? <laughs> Does that mean I wouldn't try to change the charter again in the future? Absolutely I would, because I, I see the times have changed, the city has changed, and the charter has pretty much stayed the same, and it needs to be updated with the times and updated with the changes. Connie, you, you talked a little bit about the neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor program and some of yeah. these things that are being done to handle the blight. 
Would you like to talk a little bit more about how the city is handling blight and if there's other things that can be done? Um, there's quite a bit. It's, it's surprising how many or organizations are out there willing to help. There's Habitat for Humanity. Um, there's Neighbor to Neighbor. Um, Amy has a list in her office. Um, we've had, I don't know how many, there was 30, probably at least. Yeah, 30 some homes that we had um, specified as blight homes. Um, as of today, I think there's 10. I don't know, how many down? Do you know Amy? How many are you, um, you down to? I, I, can't, I don't have, <coughs> um, but we've cut it almost in half what what was when we started so it it's a really good program um and like i said there's organizations out there that are well beyond helping us get this this done and over with thank you uh as far as the blight goes it, it is a major problem uh I live on Rheinberg and Evergreen on the corner, four blocks north of uh, uh, State Street. And it, it's like I said before, and I'm not here to offend anybody, but when somebody from out of the area turns up Rheinberg and the first thing they see is uh, Broadway, it doesn't make a good impression. And it needs to be addressed. Uh, I think one of the things that was discussed and I haven't seen any uh, resolution to it yet was the fact that the city of Scottville said they were going to look into addressing the uh, landlords with a $150 a year inspection fee and have the homes inspected. Uh, I don't know, and it's my understanding that that hasn't taken effect yet. For both of you, what would what should be done about the future of the Harvest Festival? <laughs> uh, I think the Harvest Festival is a great idea. Uh, there are things that I would like to see changed with it. For example, I used to live in Fife Lake, and we used to have horse pulling contests up there. And I can't even begin to tell you the number of people that would come in from out of state, out of area. They loved them, and, and it was really enjoyable. It's good, clean fun for the, fa the entire family. Uh, there's a number of things that we can do to expand what we do during the Harvest Festival. One of the things that I think we really need to do, though, is find another place to have the kids' rides so we're not shutting down all the businesses in, uh, in Detroit or in the city, so on Main Street so that the businesses don't suffer. The Harvest Festival is a, is a tradition. Um, and as far as working with the Harvest Festival, Co Festival Committee, it's all finances right now. Um, it costs a lot of money. People don't realize how much it costs to have a carnival come into town. They don't realize how much it costs to just to put the beer tent up. Um, it's the liability, the insurances, everything has to be covered. And people don't realize, oh, with the Harvest Festival, yeah. But they don't realize there was a big price tag on that. And what Scottville tries to do is keep the tradition here, but keep the costs low. And that's what we we're trying to do is, is keep it as traditional as we can. This is a question from the audience. Would you be in favor of using McPhail Field to grow the tax base and water base? I'm guessing that means development. Yes. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I've talked to some people and we have a growing debt. Like I said, when I first became commissioner, we had a $2 million debt. Now we're up to $4 million. And I really think that one possible way of eliminating a lot of that debt would be to actually sell McPhail Field, hopefully to a, uh, a builder 
that would put apartments or a senior center or something like that because at that point we develop a higher tax base, we develop more water sales, we, we generate more uh, residents, which actually will stimulate more business in downtown Scottville. Um, McPhail Field is owned, I think, by the school. No? Is it owned by the city? I did not know that. Sorry. Um, and as far as, as um, I know, it's still used, used by the school for soccer fields as um, an athletic field, so I have no comment on what we could do with it. One thing I would like to add is that McPhail Field also costs the city, I believe, about $10,000 a year. Um, this asks, any plans for senior housing and improved public transportation? And I guess we would just add to that, if, there, if you don't know of any plans, would you support them? I'm not aware of any. Uh, yes, I would. The, the one thing that I still stress is before we start getting ourselves any further in debt or getting ourselves involved in any projects that would uh, cost us more money, we need to start finding ways of cutting our costs and start making ourselves more financially viable. Um, I have no, no idea. Um, there's some possibilities of a senior center coming into the old schoolhouse, but the person that owns that is lives in Australia, and we don't know what his plans. He's given us three or four different ideas that what he wants to do with that building, but as far as we know, um, nothing has been developed as yet. As far as public transportation, um, I'm all for it. I'd like to see more um, public transportation come in other than dial a ride that comes just to pick the kids up from school and take them back. What do you feel is the major issue or a major issue in Scottville and how would you go about trying to change it? The major issue that I see right now is finances. Uh, I, I can't even begin to explain other than the fact that, like I said, when I first became commissioner, we were $2 million in debt. Uh, within a year and a half to four, two, for a year and a half to two years, we we're now four million dollars in debt, and we're at our within two or three mills of being at our maximum legal limit as far as taxes go. Uh, the, the residents are screaming about their water bills, and it's it needs to be addressed, plain and simple. Um. I have, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just at awe. I'd like to know where you get your financial. As I go to the meetings and I've seen the audit records, I've seen all the paper, nothing's telling me that we're that far in debt. What do we owe for the Mason County uh, bond? 1.9 million, is, cl is that close? That's a bond. That's a debt. It is, it's a debt. It's money we owe. I'm sorry, I can't. There's, we're talking about a couple of different things, I think. There's bond indebtedness, and there's also no. does, the balance, does the budget balance. Mm -hmm. And so I think, were you trying to make clear that the budget balance is? Yeah, that's, I mean, we're uh, at, there's nothing that says we're that far in debt in a, on the audits, on the books. Okay, let's go on to let um, Connie answer this question about what you think is the major issue in Scottville. I think the major issue is, is trying to get people back into this community. I think um, we've got a skeleton um, downtown. Um, the people that are here want to make people come to Scottville. The big stores are 
<laughs> buying us out. Um, we don't have the little, the big store capacity, but I feel we need more people to come in and bring in business, um, younger families with children. We just need people to know that Scottville's here for a family oriented community. And then another from the audience. Um, you, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but they want to know specifically, what do you think Scottville merchants need to make their business grow, and how would you help make them grow? Is that for me or both sure, of us? Sure, yeah. um, to make it grow, we need to improve our infrastructure. Uh, our roads are kind of a mess. We, we need to develop a way of creating exposure for Scottville. Right now, Scottville doesn't receive the exposure that it needs. Uh, how to go about that? I can't say for sure. Uh, we have we do have some nice businesses in town. Uh, Sally and her husband's place is it's, it's impressive. The Holdens, it's impressive. The Bottle and Can, it's a nice place. Cox's is an institution, uh, but we need to develop more than that. And until we can find ways to create incentive to bring more businesses in, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you're right there. We're, we're going to have to have um, some kind of incentive um, to bring businesses in. And I think the best way to do that is to advertise. Um, and that's what our committee has talked about is is like the old Nichols building. If we take the old signs down and say, hey, we've got this building um, that's empty and put it on like Craigslist or put it out there for sale, you know, we might get some more businesses in if we advertise what we've got. And I think we'll go with one last question. We appreciate everybody being here. And um, we'll put this up. Colton Lukowski is here from the Ludington Daily News. He'll put it on our website. And um, we'll have a story in tomorrow's paper from Riley Kelly. Um, <coughs> and one last question. And I appreciate you being here. We're going to end on an upbeat, okay. positive. So share with us your number one favorite thing about living here and about Scottville. <sighs> Oh, I love the location. I'm an avid fisherman, I'm an avid hunter, I love being outdoors, and Scottville just gives me the ideal location to take advantage of all of it. Uh, there's some great people here. I've, I've made a lot of good friends here, uh, I've met a lot of interesting people, and I couldn't have been luckier landing here than anywhere else. Oh. I don't know what to say because I, I was born and raised here. I live in my parents' home on 2nd Street. My parents built the house. Um, I inherited it when they passed away. Um, I have turkeys. I have deer. I have... I live in by the gully, so I, I walk my dogs every night and I'm running into deer and turkeys in my backyard. Um, it's wonderful. I, I wouldn't trade it for a million dollars. And like I said, my kids have decided they all want to come back here to retire. So I'm, I'm very proud of being a Scott Villa person and I'm willing to grow with the community just like everybody else. Okay, this is our, just our last moment if you want to uh, say anything to wrap things up. I'm here. Okay, very good. Thank you so much.